Hey everyone! Today we're going to talk about acrylic paint. I'm Lara Shima and we're watching Jolly Edition. We're going to go over what acrylic paint is, what it looks like, what it feels like, and some tips just on how I personally like to paint with acrylic. So starting from scratch, what is acrylic paint? Acrylic paint is a acrylic polymer based paint. So basically it feels really plasticky. It feels hard and a bit tacky when it dries. It's water soluble. So it's great for beginners because there's no horrible caustic solutions that you have to buy. You just need to buy the paint and you need to buy the water. It's also great to start with because it's fast drying. So this means that you're constantly having to mix. Uh, I'm a big proponent of mixing your own paint colors. I am not a fan of sets. I'm not a fan of sets of paint. Uh, I think people should be mixing their own colors. Um, I'll be going over that a little bit later. So basically I use acrylics for small pieces. I use acrylics because they are precise. They don't bleed. Uh, they're great for layering. They can provide soft edges and they can provide hard edges, depending on how you use them. Another difference between acrylic and, let's say, watercolor uh, is the paper that you need. So, because I work with, I work on small scale, I work with thin layers, I like a really smooth paper that it sits right on the surface. It can just slide off. It's great. I really like that. Whereas when you're dealing with watercolor, you want that coarse paper to be catching the, the water, basically. That might be a bit advanced. Uh, so if you're just learning to mix, uh, just have fun with it, you get the paints out and start mixing. I'll go over which colors you'll be needing, which colors are really good starter colors. So I got started painting acrylic um, sophomore year of high school. We started with real life situations. So now I am painting from clients research. There's not uh, a person in front of me that I'm looking at and painting. There's not a still life set up for me, um, but that's how I got started. I would work with, with paints that were meant for larger scale stuff. So I would start with stuff along the lines of these. And now I mostly work with these little guys, golden acrylics. I just love them. They are definitely for small scale. They are not for large scale, either zero or one size brushes. So this is about the size that I work with. It's a one. Yeah, about that size. So I like to work with that for the detail stuff. Um, I get a little bit thicker initial color, like a size two, that sort of. If I want to go nuts, I'll go for a four. That's basically my toolkit. I should probably update some of them. I kind of like working with brushes that are a little bit frayed. It gives a little bit more texture and I can blend a little bit better. I wouldn't recommend it for people who aren't practiced with that, but that's just kind of how I the story of how I got, yeah, yeah, about how I got started. Okay, let me think. So yeah, I was basically working on uh, real life studies, working on canvases that were at least 18 by 24 starting out. Um, so I got my fill of mixing and painting and not being afraid to fail, not being afraid to make some crap. You kind of got to, you kind of got to make some crap to get better. All right, starting from basics, I pretty much just use red, blue, and yellow. So to start with the neutrals, I choose titanium white. There is also zinc white, but I find it a bit chalky. Black, black's a bit trickier. I do not use black to mix paints. I use black when I need a black outline. I also use black to do calligraphy because the acrylic is more controllable than ink. Ink can be runny, ink can bleed, ink can do unexpected things, whereas 
The bone black acrylic is really great for calligraphy because it doesn't really move and you won't get it feathering out into the paper. You might think blues are cool, yellows are warm, reds are warm. Each of these colors has counterparted temperatures. So for example, this is the cool side, this is the warm side. Right. Alizarin crimson, always a cool color. Its counterpart, cadmium red, always a warm color. Hansa yellow medium is actually pretty neutral, but I say it probably verges on cool toned. Cadmium yellow, always warm tone. Rule of thumb, cadmiums are warm. So I personally use phthalo blue as a cool blue. It just happens to be my favorite shade of blue. Cerulean blue is a good warm blue. You might be thinking, why are there different sizes? Uh, it reflects how often I use each of these things. So I must go through several Velo blues every year. Hansi yellows, I go through a lot. I actually go through more cad reds than I do alizarins. Uh, the alizarin crimson doesn't mix very well. Whereas cad red, that's a really good mixing red. And then I have a ton of tertiary colors, colors that are already mixed. I do not like to lean on mixed colors whatsoever. I prefer to stay to the three and three method, the three primaries in cool, the three primaries in warm. There's something about pre-mixed colors where if it's not the exact color that you need at that point, you're trying to mix it into something else, it gets very muddy. I, do, I don't like it, but I, I do have a lot of tertiary colors because sometimes you just need that perfect color. Okay, we'll start with the blues, the blues of the blue. So ultramarine blue is actually a really good standard cool color blue. So you could replace that with thalo blue because thalo blue does have a really, really specific sort of metallic-y color, um, much like this peacock. This peacock is pretty much all thalo blue. Whereas ultramarine blue, it's almost purpley. Prussian blue. Prussian blue is hard to manage, so be careful with it. I use it for, to get really dark colors. It's the closest you can come to black to mix Prussian blue with a little bit of cadmium red. So I would use that if you're trying to get a deep, dark color. Do not use black because if you mix black with anything else, it will look a little bit more gray. Chromium oxide green. Okay, this is a very specific color. I use it pretty much only for plants. I use it for this guy right here because there's a quality I just could not reach by mixing. It has a lack of yellow that is very strange in a green. And that's why I used it for that because it looked like a plant that had been left out in the sun too long. So let's get into more of the warm colors. This is uh, green gold, which is really great for light colored greenery. For example, this is very much green gold. I color it in first with a really light layer of acrylic, just some acrylic and water so that I can see the drawing underneath. So that base layer was green gold. On the warm team, we have cobalt blue. Sap green, sap green is a savior when it comes to greenery. Uh, I use it pretty much in all of the detail work on here. It can mix with any other color, it mixes great leaves. So yeah, that's a keeper. If you guys are doing anything to do with greenery, sap green is, it's a must, it's a must buy. Okay, so I do not mess with magenta all that often. Um, what I do is for very specific purposes, like blooms, mostly just accent blooms. They're beautiful accent colors. Uh, I would not mix anything with these. Ah, 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 this guy, he almost got out of here. Okay, again, this is for really specific purposes because Hansi Yellow Light does not mix very well. It will make things look a little bit cloudy, a little bit muddy. Um, a lot of times I'll load up my palette with only about four or five colors at a time and then mix from there. The reason I don't load my palette with a bunch of colors to begin with is because 
uh, it's gonna dry. So that was, it's just kind of a waste of paint to put all of my colors out. Um, of course, for beginners, you know, don't worry about that. Just, just load up your palette the way that you like and get a feel for the colors that work for you. I like to apply paint by layering, starting with a light wash, which just means a little bit of pigment and a lot of water. So I just did a sap green wash and now I'm using a phthalo blue wash. I'm going to start applying my dark layer, which is basically just pure pigment, pure paint without any dilution of water. The less water you use, the darker the hue is going to be and the better I can apply details such as these feathers. If you want just overall lightness, use the wash. As for highlights, use the white with paint. What you're going to do is find the darkest spot. You're going to use that highlight color right in the middle of the darkest spot. So you have the greatest amount of contrast. And that is what a highlight is. Okay, now go out, get your paints, get your paint brushes, uh, get your water and set up. Just get started. You have just watched an episode of Jolly Vision. I am Laura Shima. Thank you for watching. If you have any other ideas for episodes, any other questions, feel free to write in the comments. Feel free to DM at Jolly Edition. I'm ready for your feedback. Give it to me. Give it to me. Go on. It's okay. Bye. Wrapping it up. I'm being sassy. Oh, I'm going to start over.